I'm Stacy, and this is my daughter, Daniela. And we have two cats, Missy and Fluffy. My mom adopted Missy about five years ago, and I adopted Fluffy a year ago. <laughs> Missy, no. Missy does not like having Fluffy living in this house. She bites and scratches. She rips hair out of him. <laughs> oh. OK. Oh. She's drawn blood from him before. Hey. She sits outside of my door because she knows that Fluffy is in my room. She just waits for any opportunity to get at Fluffy. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Honestly, I think that Missy could kill Fluffy. The only option that we have right now is keeping them in separate rooms at separate times, and we switch them every four hours. So it's time to switch the cats. It consumes our day. <laughs> Come on. Oh my god. Close your door so I can let Missy out, because it's been like five hours. Then we have to get my husband involved if he's the one here. My day's off. When I'm sitting here relaxing, I'll get texts. Which cat is out? I need to change the cat. Your turn, Fluff. I'm doing. It's just becoming too much. Missy wants Fluffy dead. Oh. Full on, jumping on top of him, attacking him. She had cut his nose at one point. Wow. And Fluffy just curls up and does nothing. The worst it had ever gotten was when Fluffy was just chilling, laying around, and she was ready to attack Fluffy. And my mom would grab Missy. Big mistake. Did you get pretty badly beat up? Scratches up her arms, both hands. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, that's a bad going. bite. She was on antibiotics for 10 and days a and painkiller shot. Pain killer shot. That took was my. To, that yeah. took it to the next level when that happened. That, that's ugly. We can't like just keep letting this happen, so we just had to completely separate them at all times. So we do shifts. What do the shifts look like? Every four hours, we switch. On the dot? Yes, they're on the dot. <laughs> oh my god. It's very frustrating. We haven't been able to do anything as a family unless we come back or somebody stays here. That's really what's taking the toll right now. Missy will be locked in my mom's room while Fluffy's out here enjoying his space. And then once it's time to switch, we put Fluffy in my room, Missy comes out. Okay. So we get into it sometimes. I don't want to argue about cat stuff with my daughter. I'm sure the arguments center around my cat, your cat. What is the thing that sets you off? If you give one cat an extra hour, then, you know, my mom will be like, well, it's Missy's turn out. Right, right. The last switch of the day or morning is about two or three in the morning. I stay up every night to make sure that the cats get enough time out. Wow. It's everything. You're going to switch cats at 2 o'clock in the morning? You think the cat cares where they are at 2 o'clock in the morning? Let me wake you up here for a second. No, they don't care. Was Fluffy neutered by the time he got here? Or did he you was. Have to, OK. And how old was Missy when she got spayed? She has not been spayed. What? Why is your cat not spayed? It's down on the list of expenses. We absolutely love our vet and we trust her. And if our cat was to go under surgery, we would want it to be with her. But it's like $500. Listen, your cat is your family member. It's one of your children. Find a way to pay for it. Go to a clinic. We haven't gotten her fixed because it's expensive. And I'm afraid to get somebody I don't trust to do the job correctly. Just like with humans and with animals, going into surgery it just makes me very nervous. This is one of the simplest, easiest, quickest operations. I think they need to hear that from you to go to a I'm clinic. telling you, any vet hospital does a spay three, four, five times a day. Every time your cat goes into heat, she triples her chances of ovarian cancer. And most importantly, her hormones are making this happen. The last thing I can do right now is make a concrete or reliable behavioral diagnosis when everything that's happening right now is physical. What is she staring at? What's down the hallway? Down the hallway to the left, to is, the left is fluffy. No, she couldn't be. <laughs> she goes, so Danielle, this is your room? Yep, and she goes right to it. Oh. She just will sit there and she will wait until there's some opportunity that the door is open and she'll go at it. Missy is just parked outside of Daniela's bedroom knowing that Fluffy's in there and she's just like, bring it. I want what's in there. Well, here's what I want to do. I would like to see the switch. Now, I've seen Missy. I've seen her body language. I've gotten a lot of information from her. Now I want to see Fluffy. Fluffy's been sequestered away all day. I want to see this swap happen. Hey, Missy. 
Gigi. <laughs> she knows it's coming. So this is every time? Yeah. Come on, I gotta go. I've seen Missy, I've seen her body language. Now I wanna see Fluffy. Fluffy's been sequestered away all day. I wanna see this swap happen. Oh God. I can't tell if Missy's desire to be out here is just because we're out here and she's a social cat or whether she's got murder on her mind. Whatever it is, it's not a good sign. Did she get you? Just a little. Okay. Normally, in this kind of a situation, I would bring the cats together so I can gauge their behavior around one another. But as long as Missy has not been spayed, that is not on the menu today. Hello, Fluffy. Hi. You want some food? Come on, buddy. Okay. What's that? That is probably Missy, scratching at the door, trying to come out. That sound is Missy? Trying to get out of the room. When she knows that Fluffy's out here, yeah. she just goes out the door, because she wants out. First, we are going to get Missy spayed. Does Missy hate Fluffy? We have no idea. We don't know. So, appointment gets made, she gets in, remembering that as the hormones go away, we still got other issues. Everything from seeking mates, to protecting uh, her territory, to guarding, to that sort of hypervigilance. We're gonna have to work that after the hormones are out of her system. The next thing I want you guys to do is feeding reintroduction exercise. I want you to feed them on either side of the door so there are no sight lines and they can't see each other. First couple of meals, four feet on either side of the door, eight feet total. And then you gauge. If at that meal they're just eat, walk away, next time a little six inches more. And also no feeding between meals. What we're trying to rebuild here is a sense of neutrality. You're not a good thing or a bad thing, but every time I smell you, I smell food. It's a good place to start. And we're reintroducing these guys as if nothing bad ever happened. Next thing. Catification, the art of arranging for cats. We're building for the future. This is obviously not gonna happen tomorrow, but when these guys are out at the same time, we're gonna try to mitigate places where there are dead ends and ambush zones. I wanna make sure that Fluffy and Missy never have an excuse for fighting that's based on ambushing or cornering. The hardest part of this traffic flow situation is gonna be that hallway. Because if these guys are always competing for floor space, that hallway is gonna be a place where all the fights happen. What I want you to think about is lanes of highway, and then we have ramps that lead to those different places. So they can go on ramp, off ramp, different lanes of highway, no dead ends, no ambush zones. Last thing, the whole four hour switcheroo thing, well, there's no reason for it at all. Usually I am all about rituals and routines. This time around, I'm gonna say the opposite. I wanna see Fluffy sleeping in your room. I would like to see Missy sleeping in your room. We want them both to own the space separately at this point, right. but equally. I need Stacy and Danielle to spend some more time bonding with each other's cats and create a whole family out of this and not this silly competition. You guys all right with that? Good. I don't know. To break the rituals, it's gonna take the whole family to make the changes because we have all gotten into a habit of us doing it a certain way.